So you've been breaking your back all summer long, working hard, saving money, and it's time to upgrade or build your computer. And you've been picking all your parts and you've gotten to the part where you have to pick your video card and you're just lost. You don't know what to do, it's overwhelming, and you're like, oh my god, why does this have to be so hard? Well, graphics cards typically aren't cheap and it's an important decision you need to make because it makes, well, all the difference when it comes to your gaming experiences on your computer. So today we're gonna to go ahead and talk about graphics cards, we're gonna talk about what a lot of the different types of specs mean, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will be a entry-level expert on what video cards are, and you should hopefully be able to make the right decision for you when it comes to buying your next video card. Now my job today, if I technically have a job, is not to pick the graphics card for you and say, hey you, James, why don't you go ahead and just pick up an R9 280, brah? That's gonna be the card for you. That's not what I'm doing today. What I'm gonna do today is if you're finding yourself in a pickle where you don't know what a lot of the terminology means and you don't know what some of the basics are of graphics cards, it's gonna be impossible for you to pick your card. So I'm gonna arm you today with the information of what a lot of the specs and a lot of the terminology means so that you can then start hunting with armed with some information and it will start making sense to you. Now the first thing I wanna go ahead and cover is the cooler. The cooler is quite often referred to either as a custom cooler or a reference cooler. Now what I'm holding right here is the reference GTX 780 cooler designed by NVIDIA for, well, you guessed it, the GTX 780. And this is an all NVIDIA design. NVIDIA designed this cooler to go on their card. That's why it's referred to as reference. This is the reference sent over by NVIDIA to the board partners, all these guys behind me here. And they are gonna basically use this cooler on the graphics cards that they're just following the blueprint sent over to them. Quite often they're gonna say, well, you know, we don't necessarily want to do the blower style. They're hotter, they're noisier, and uh, they just don't wanna do that. They're gonna come up with some sort of a custom cooler, which is what I'm holding right here. Gigabyte is very well known for their Windforce edition. It's got more fans, slower RPMs, bigger heat sinks, and they run an awful lot cooler. Now, oftentimes, reference coolers are also going to be mated with a reference PCB. What does that mean? Well, the PCB, guys, that's the circuit board. That's this guy right here on the back. Now, that has a blueprint that goes along with it. It's sent over by the board designers, again, AMD and ATI or NVIDIA, and then the board manufacturers, MSI, Vision Tech, EVGA, XFX, Gigabyte, they are taking the blueprint and actually building the card. Believe it or not, these cards are not built by NVIDIA or AMD. They're built by the partners putting their name on them. They're just taking the blueprints and building it. Now, custom PCBs is when they take the blueprint and they make their own in-house changes. The Gigabyte 970 is a fully custom PCB, fully custom cooler, Every single component on here, the capacitors, the power phases, the VRMs, the heat sinks, everything on this is completely built in-house, designed in-house. And really the only thing it shares with the NVIDIA design at all is the fact that it's running a GK204 GPU on the inside. That's really it. In fact, GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. I might have wanted to start a little more basic with something like that. Now the logical way of thinking would be, well, if it's better in every way, why on earth would I want to go with a reference model? It, it, it sounds amazing, it's cooler, it's quieter, it's faster, it overclocks better, higher quality components, it's gonna last longer, hold its value better. Why on earth would I not want to go with that? Well, quite often, guys, it comes with a price premium. It's gonna cost more, oftentimes 30, 40, 50, or $100 more, depending on the model. So really, it comes down to price. Now there's another aspect that you may wanna consider. Maybe you want to water cool the graphics card in the future. If that's the case, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to find a water block for this guy or many of the other custom PCBs because they're much narrower portion or market share. There's not as many of these on the market. Therefore, tooling and building custom water blocks for a card that is very, very small in terms of percentage of the market that has this card it's not gonna be lucrative or worthwhile for these uh, water block manufacturers to actually build blocks for them. If you own a Windforce card and you've wanted to water cool, 
any version of the WinForce card, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So reference PCBs make more sense because reference PCBs are what the blocks are being made for. Now with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and point out that I've got my three GTX 980s right here and people have asked me, Jay, why did you go with the reference style and not the for the win or classified or whatever? That's because if I wanna water cool these bad boys, I've gotta go with the reference PCB. Now, oftentimes you'll find an aftermarket cooler on a reference PCB, and that's what we have right here from EVGA. The GTX 980. Doesn't have a backplate. It's kind of poopy. But it's a reference PCB. This is all reference with their components that they picked, usually higher quality capacitors and things like that, um, with their own custom cooler on there. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You keep the reference PCB quiet, cool, and uh, you can water cool it if you want. So that's why I went with those. Now, when it comes to the amount of VRAM that you need, people tend to really get caught up on that and they seem to think, oh my God, if I don't have enough VRAM, my computer's gonna explode. I I've actually seen some comments where people have said, I I I'm not even kidding, guys. I have seen the blind leading the blind. I have seen some people say, no, you need to have XYZ amount of VRAM because if you don't, then your computer is going to suddenly shut off and that sudden shut off could trigger your power supply to catch fire and burn your house down. I, guys, I'm not making this up. I have seen that comment in my own videos. And it brought, and it brought a very disappointing tear to my eye. Guys, if you don't have enough VRAM, what's going to happen is your frames per second is simply going to cap out and won't go any higher. Now let's talk about VRAM real quick. VRAM is video RAM or video memory. It's GDDR5 currently, and people seem to think that you have to have gobs and gobs of it. Well, that's true to an extent. If you're running a 1080p panel at 60 frames per second or 60 hertz, chances are you don't need more than two gigabytes of VRAM. 1080p is not using that much VRAM, unless there's always an unless, right? Gotta be the bust burster of bubbles. The unless being if you're running custom texture packs or high amounts of MSAA or anti-aliasing, that really eats up VRAM. Like the Shadow of Mordor game, they have a texture pack that apparently requires six gigabytes of VRAM, and there's only a couple of cards on the planet that have six gigabytes of VRAM available to it. The other thing that tends to eat up VRAM, as I mentioned, is high amounts of MSAA. Turning up to 2x or 4x or even all the way up to 8x, it's just multi-sampling and it's gonna cause VRAM to be chewed through like crazy. So if you can get two gigabytes of VRAM for 1080p, that's usually gonna be enough. Most graphics cards now are gonna be offering three gigabytes or higher, but like the 760 right here has got two gigabytes. The uh, R9 285 right here has two gigabytes. The seven or the 270 has two gigabytes. You can kind of see the cards and where they're designed to really run. That, that's kind of a telltale sign of it being a 1080p card if it only has two gigabytes of VRAM. Now, if you're gonna be running higher resolutions like 1440p, 1600p, or 4K, yeah, you, you wanna pack as much VRAM on there as you can. And a lot of the custom PCBs will also come with higher amounts of VRAM. So often that's kind of killing two birds with one stone. But once again, when you start dealing with these custom cards that have more VRAM, usually there's a pretty hefty premium on there as well. One of the benefits though to running high resolution monitors is you don't need to run as much MSAA because MSAA is designed to make the edges more less jagged, not more jagged, less jagged because the lower resolution means you don't get smooth edges and a high resolution by default is giving you smoother edges. So you don't have to run as much MSAA. The last thing I want to talk about here is there seems to be this common misconception of it's better to get two lesser cards and run them in SLI or Crossfire than it is to get a single high-end card. Guys, here is my professional opinion. And I'm speaking as someone who has multi-GPU configuration and has been dealing with them for a while. It is always, always, always better to get the highest end single card that you can get and then SLI or Crossfire that later. Don't make a conscious choice now to get two lesser cards and run them in a parallel SLI or Crossfire config thinking you're gonna get better performance. More often than not, two lesser cards are going to match the performance of a single card, but introduce other things like possibilities of micro stutter, higher power supply requirements, games that just simply don't scale are gonna give you the same performance as one card and you're gonna be left going, why the heck am I only getting 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second? I have two cards. I should be getting a bajillion frames per second. This doesn't make any sense. It does make sense. The people designing the games and the people designing the cards have to create profiles 
for the cards to even know what to do in tandem. And if those don't exist, you're not gonna be benefiting from going with a multi-GPU configuration anyway. So my recommendation on this one, go with the single GPU and the highest end single GPU that you can afford. You'll thank me later, I promise. I know the other question is just on all of your minds and you're dying to ask it and you may have already typed it before even getting to this part of the video. And if you did, shame on you. You should always watch the entire video before commenting. You guys wanna know AMD or Nvidia? Well, I can't answer that in this video. I just can't. I've done videos in the past about AMD versus Nvidia. I will do future videos AMD versus Nvidia. But in this video today, I can't answer that. Both sides offer great offerings to the community. AMD is really pushing Mantle, although DirectX 12 is supposed to be kind of the global version of better API when it comes to uh, hardware and software utilization. Guys, I, I can't answer that. Both of them have their great offerings and they continue to trade blows and they continue to get stronger and trump the other. And all I can say is that's great for the community. It is great for pricing and it's great for the consumer. If you guys are team red, go with an AMD graphics card, more power to you. If you guys are team green, good for you as well. It's great to have community support. But just remember guys, we're all PC gamers. And as a whole, we, are, we belong to one big giant collective and that is PC gaming. And we should all be happy that we just have our gaming PCs to begin with, whether they be AMD or Nvidia. But it's gonna take a whole nother video to talk about pros and cons of either versus the other. And we're not gonna tackle that with a 25 foot pole today. So guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. I hope I've given you some information to make it a little bit easier making your choice. You're still stuck with that AMD versus Nvidia question, but hopefully you guys can uh, make some informed decisions. And as always, if you guys have any questions or something I missed, put it down in the comments section or follow on that there Twitter. I'm very active up on that Twitter and I don't know why all of a sudden I started talking like a southerner, but we did and now I'm stuck. So this is probably the best time to end the video. People from the south don't like when you pretend from, from the south. Although I am from Southern California, you can't deny me my Southern, my Southern blood. All right guys. See you in the next one. Yeehaw.